All right, if you want to let everyone into the Zoom program, this is a hybrid program. All right, Corinne is letting all of our Zoom participants in. And thank you all for being here in person. All right. Welcome to Horticulture Corner, Let It Rain. I'm Denise Reagan. I'm the executive director of the Garden Club of Jacksonville. And joining me from our staff is Corinne Lightfoot, who's handling our uh, technical duties right now, our marketing and membership manager. And I believe Morgan, oh, there's Morgan. Morgan Pinks is our um, uh, operations manager. God, my brain went totally blank. And then Christy Asuna is uh, our event ambassador who is tending the bar. So if you'd like a drink or a snack or something, please uh, see her. All right. Um, and I did not do my duties there. All right. So um, that's us. And now, so I'd also like to thank our Horticulture Corner co-chairs. Susan Painter is here with us in the audience. And uh, Mika Hardison, who have put together a really great year of programming. And we're so appreciative of them. Um, I'd like to thank all the Garden Club members who are here. If you're a Garden Club member, raise your hand. Fantastic. Give yourselves a round of applause for attending a program here. We love having you here. And if you're not a member, I encourage you to speak to one of our staff um, or any of our members and ask them why they're members of the Garden Club, because it's a really great thing to be. We just had a great program last weekend, um, and members got a really great discount and got to see and uh, buy a plants early at our preview party for Blooms Galore and more. All right. I want to tell you about a couple of upcoming programs. And if you are not familiar with the designer of distinction, uh, you really want to know about this. Uh, Jackie Lacey is the Director of Education and Industry Relations at Floriology Institute, um, which is a local um, organization with a nationwide reach. Um, and he'll be doing an in-depth presentation on floral design and demonstration um, as well. And so he'll be demonstrating and making arrangements that you can then uh, get raffle tickets and take home with you. And they're going to be astounding. Um, the program is followed by a three-course catered lunch. So it's a really lovely day, um, April 27th. I encourage you to get your tickets fast. Uh, we have our next Horticulture Corner program, which is called Rain Gardens, because this is the season of rain, after all. Um, Daria Wicks um, will share ways to rescue rain by creating a beautiful, beneficial garden that purifies toxic runoff. She will discuss the benefits of a rain garden, as well as a few fundamental build instructions, and that is on May 2nd. And then coming up on May 13th is Riverside Avondale Preservation has a garden tour. And we are a stop on the garden tour. So we'd really love to see you as part of that. Um, the Tuck Tuck, um, Go Tuckin will be doing Tuck Tuck tours that start and end here. So you can visit all the stops on the tour um, starting here. So you can park here and then not have to drive. You can just enjoy the ride. Um, we'll be having activities here for adults and children, some um, refreshments, and uh, having, you know, just a fun day at the Garden Club. So please come by on May 13th. All right, now I'd like to introduce our speaker for the day. Evie Panko is a Master Gardener volunteer in Duval County, whose specialty is environmentally friendly landscapes. She recently retired from the Duval County Extension Office, where she served many years as a horticulture agent and then as a Florida-friendly landscaping program assistant. We're very lucky to have her here with us today for so many reasons. Um, if you have questions for Evie, we would love for you, if you're on Zoom, to put them in the chat, and we'll pose them to her afterward. And if you're here in the audience, we're going to bring a microphone around to you. So raise your hand after the program, and we'll get your questions then. All right, now I'd like you to put your hands together for a great big welcome for Evie Panko. Is that better? Okay. So I want to introduce you to Nancy Traver. She's going to give us some of the initial beginning about what do we do? Why rain? Why runoff? Why well, anything? Because 
What is it we have to protect here with all this water? Our environment, what else? The river, the St. John's River. Okay, so Nancy's going to start out with us, and then I'll be back, and then you can clap again if you like, okay? <laughs> Ah, that time it stayed. It kept flicking back off on me. Well, I would say good afternoon, but I think we're into evening, a wet evening at that. And um, I am a Florida Master Gardener volunteer and recently certified Florida Friendly Certified Professional. I just finished my course. I got my certificate last night. So that makes it even more official to talk to you about water. So a lot of what we do is really environmentally based. We try to protect the water. It's a good day to talk about water uh, because we're certainly getting a lot of it, but we still need more. We have nine principles in Florida Friendly, and this falls into the reducing the stormwater runoff as well as protect the waterfront, which is a lot of what I talk about. Um, the mission is, of course, with the Florida Friendly Landscaping. Um, we're trying to emphasize the nine principles. We're trying to protect the water. And I'm going to spend just a minute talking about finding out how many of you know where all this lovely rainwater that's come down into the roads is going. Where is it going? Is it getting filtered? Is it getting cleaned? Is it dirty? Is it what? It's going, it's going to the river. Most of Jacksonville, where the properties are somewhere associated close to the river, the storm drain system gathers the water and shoots it underground straight to the river. So anything that's in that drain is going straight to the river. So the oil from the highway, the grease, the trash that somebody threw out, the kids playing and throwing the balls in there, the lost ducks, they're all going straight to the river. And it's not getting an opportunity to go to our aquifer and get filtered down through the system. I just was recently over on the other side of the river at a community that is built on an old golf course. And they found out that the entire drainage system for the golf course was still there. The houses are built on top of it. They couldn't understand why sometimes they get a little rise in their property or a little sink in their property. And that's because that old system is shifting and adjusting. And they didn't know that everything they were doing in their yard was going straight to the river. So that's what stormwater runoff is, and that's why we talk about it, because we want to make sure you know and don't do things like painting your house and deciding that you're going to clean the paint cans out and dump them in a storm drain, because they're going to go back to that good old river. All these pollutants go into the water that we drink as it goes on its way to the aquifer. The other really bad part of pollution is that we can't find a single cause. It comes from everywhere. One of the biggest questions lately is who is the biggest producer of water pollution? And everybody thinks, well, it's the factories and the, and the utility companies. It's not. They've cleaned up their act. They've cleaned up their act very, very well. It's not the big cities taking the space because, again, they're cleaning up their act. It's agriculture. And what's the number one industry in Florida right now? Agriculture. So the farmers are our biggest pollutants, followed very closely by the homeowners. Because after all, what is your turf yard? It's agriculture. Think about it. When you have all that lovely turf, you've paid probably money to have it put in. You pay somebody to fertilize it. Some of you pay people to mow it. Some of you don't. You pay for pesticides to kill the bugs that like to live in it. You pay for stuff to kill the weeds that come up in the spring, and you pay to, to kill the weeds that come up at the end of the summer. Boy, have they got you guys all hooked into producing the biggest crop in Florida. Is all that turf that we're growing, mowing, cultivating, 
growing, mowing. What a lot of money. So one of the things that we can do to help, especially in your yard, is to save the rainwater. That's why old Bessie's here. Um, by collecting rainwater, we can use that water to water the plants instead of turning the irrigation system on. Because if you have established your plants well, they don't need water once they're established, especially your trees. When your trees are well rooted into the ground, they don't need supplemental water. They're going to take care of themselves. I live in an HOA subdivision. I have St. Augustine grass. I never turn my irrigation system on. I have trained my grass by starving it of water to push the roots down deeper and get the water that's there. So I'm saving money because I'm not turning the irrigation on. And I'm not wasting money by putting the irrigation on and paying for the water and the sewage rate because even though it's not going down the sewer, you automatically get charged like it's going down the sewer. Well, that's the way that all works. So we're trying to work more on not using the water, collect the water, keep the water clean. H2O is the big thing that sustains us all. We all need water. Do you know how much of the Earth's water is suitable for drinking? Think about it. We got a lot of oceans that we don't drink from. Anybody got an answer? 10%? You think maybe? How about 3%? 3% of all the drinkable water is what we've got for water. That's not a lot of water. And the other good thing we're growing in, in Florida right now are subdivisions. We're really good at growing subdivisions. So where does the rain go? It goes into the trees. It goes back into the air. Some of it goes down to the ground. A lot of it goes to the river. At Jacksonville Beach, to stop the flooding on 3rd Third, Third Street, they dug a new system that goes through the dunes. It goes straight from the street out through the dunes and down to the ocean. And if you're ever out there on a really good day and see kids playing in those little streams, they're playing in street runoff. I just, I cringe because I know what it is and the, the parents don't. But we have evaporation. We have some going down to the filter. We have some going straight to the river. We don't get a whole lot going to the aquifer that way. So we're trying to reduce the runoff. And I understand Daria is coming next month and she's going to teach you a method for that. That's what rain gardens do. It holds it in one spot. Hopefully, she's, she remembers to sell, tell everybody that it also means less mowing if you have rain gardens because you can't mow over them, just water in them. So we want to capture the rain. The subdivisions that have retention ponds or detention ponds, they have one or the other. Abby's over here poking me. She said, I've, I've used up my time. We're going to collect the rain. I'm, we're into her slides. But anyway, that is where some of that water is going. So we're going to turn it back to you. You ready to get up? You can turn on your butt. I am. Can I, I turn did. mine off now? Yes. Frickin' frack. Have a, have a good evening. <laughs> be careful. Be, care, be careful. I'm the one with the dog leash. You're not. <laughs> we have to save that water. And if you see this particular slide, we're talking about rain barrels here today. That looks to me like buckets and things like that, right? So I guess we don't collect rain in that, do we? You can collect rain in anything that holds water, anything. So that's what this is telling you right there. It, it holds water, so let's collect it. So Nancy's trying to tell us about the runoff and and things that are really not good for here. And that's for sure. She did a good job with that. But we can reduce some of that runoff in certain ways. And this, this way is showing you earth shaping. What in the heck do I mean by that? Do you see these terraces here? You see how it's coming from up here, down here? So what does that do if you have a terrace in your yard and it's raining? It's slowing it down, right? I look around to see that you two are still smiling. Okay. So it's slowing it down, and that's going to reduce the amount that's rushing right into the storm drain that Nancy was talking about. And so, therefore, 
that's the bit, one of the ways that we can reduce it. Another is, uh, how many times have I seen somebody with downspouts onto their sidewalk or their driveway? I can't count that many. It happens all the time. Now you think about yourself, raise your hand if you're downspouts going onto the driveway or cement. Look, Nancy, they won't admit it. They won't admit it. Uh, well, you want to get it off the driveway, off the cement, and put it into the landscape somehow. Okay? You can reduce it by pervious surfaces. So what do I mean by pervious surface? Something where the water will go through. Looking at this, right here, this particular, this particular uh, picture is showing you a sidewalk. That happens to be the house in Gainesville that is full Florida friendly. Everything about that house is Florida friendly when they built it for, and that was for that purpose. And you see how these, I love this one here with the grass in between. And do you see, the, am I getting getting it to the right? Oh, I have, okay, thank you for that. Okay, well, the last one, the bottom one that says red brick, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that idea used for driveways at the beach because they didn't have much room in their landscape. And I thought that looked very nice and you can mow over it if it gets tall enough. So that's another idea. Then how do we capture the rain? There's more than one way, more than one way with a rain barrel. We capture the rain in a garden pond. So what are we going to do with the garden pond? It's going to attract that wildlife that we're trying to keep into our, our landscape. It's going to be our backyard oasis where we take our wine, oats, I mean our coffee, coffee, coffee out for the afternoon snack, you know, and, and talking to your friends. I don't know why. Are you raising your hand? Okay. She's sweating already. <laughs> anyway. Retention pond is the next. Now, retention pond is, spent, is meant to hold a specific amount of water and hold it indefinitely. So what's the other pond? The detention pond, and that one is used to hold it temporarily. It's for flood control, right? We can capture the rain with a green roof. Are you familiar with the green roof? Do you know we have one nearby? that you can visit. Mm -hmm. We have one right here where it says greenroof.com. That's on Highway Avenue and the company is breaking ground. And they have the green roof up there that I know that they had tours for the kids and, and others. So there, if you were interested, go to that website. But the green roof is very interesting to see it. I don't know whether I would want to live under a green roof or not, but they have all the, the things that are going to make it secure, of course. But I think about all that dirt coming down on top of you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to swear. I said dirt. That's a swear word. That's what we were taught in Mr. Gardner class. So we have to say soil. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that, Denise. And then just like she mentioned about Daria, what Daria is going to talk about next time is rain gardens. So this little one is just showing you if you were attached your rain garden to the downspout of your house, you don't have to, but you can. It's a rain garden is only six to eight inches deep. It's not, it's not uh, very deep and there are different things that you want to do with it. And I don't want to get into Daria's presentation on rain gardens. So you come next time to see that and hear that. There are cisterns. And you see there are different kinds of cisterns. There's the tall, tall one and different. One looks like, a, what's that black one look like? A bug actually with eyes. <laughs> but I, they, the thing about the cistern that I find to be most, what would be the right word, desirable is that the mosquitoes are not an issue. Why? I'm not hearing you. 
because they're closed in, mosquitoes cannot get in there. So that's, that to me makes it a, a good thing. And now just take a, just a brief look at what a rain barrel looks like. And I mean, besides what we're seeing here, that when it comes to making a rain barrel, you have your downspout or not. You don't have to have a downspout to have a rain barrel. I'm gonna mention that here in a second. But um, come back. You do, I keep wanting to go there and it's not working to go here for me. Okay, you see where the blue line is? That says mosquito donut. Now that's, a, a, we call, and we have some here. This is a mosquito dunk and it's about $10 to get this at Lowe's, six. They also make these little mosquito bits. And now those, we call them dunks. Those dunks can be on top of the barrel or they can be on the, in the water. That's entirely up to you as the homeowner of that barrel and the mosquito dunks. But they'll last about three months in these solid ones. You can also take these and put them in bird bath. You can also put them in uh, your plant saucers. So they work quite well, quite well. And at the bottom here, you'll see a spigot and you'll see an overflow. And we'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. And this happens to be, you see mama rain barrel right here in the picture. This is our rain barrel family at the office. We have daddy rain barrel who's tending the chickens. Mama rain barrel is picking her flowers. And then baby rain barrel was catching butterflies. And then there's grandbaby. Who, who's just just there. And then we have Bucket, that's the pet of the Rain Barrel family. I think they like that one. Okay. So that sits in the hall at the office, in, except he, this one's here, mama's here. So what are the benefits? Well, they're of a rain barrel. It's a way to collect that rain that we want to keep and reuse it keeps the water out of their storm and sewer systems, right? That we know is bad. It protects the St. John's and other areas, the retention ponds that we have in the area, any, any of the waterways at all. It controls the moisture around your foundation of your home. That's important too, because you don't want water hanging around your home. And we'll talk about that another second, uh, about uh, we want 10% difference from your, your foundation. Uh, it provides oxygenated, unchlorified, unchlorinated water, which is good for the plants. It's direct overflow to where you want it, which reduces your water bills. Think about it. What are you going to do with the money that you save with those water bills? You girls are going to speak up. Oh, you'll buy some more land. Oh, plants, you'll buy more plants, okay. Oh, they don't buy the same thing I do. I buy jewelry. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna conserve water in the summer months when the demand is the highest. So I think that we would all agree with those things, don't you? Okay, what's the rain barrel look like? Here's a ready-made barrel. Nothing wrong with that. If you've got the money, go out and buy a barrel. This was our very first rain barrel. This is one that I made and I'm not a painter. So these are decals and that's my home house number 6304, but this sits in the office. But I mean, there's things, decorating is the, the brain doesn't care. You can have a plain barrel, a shapely barrel, a uh, stacked or colorful. You see those are purchased barrels. I like these, this one was painted by one of the master gardeners on the left and Terry, our agent painted the right one. And we uh, sold that at an auction the first year we, we did the barrels. And this one is an oaken barrel. It looks pretty to me. And here's a stand up, which is kind of interesting. This one that lays down is also interesting because it's, if you can see it, you can't see it there. 
and you can't see it in there. But you, in the very back of that barrel at the top, you see that little white dot? That's actually a hose coming out and going up to a downspout. And then down at where the barrel is, is tilted down, the spigot is on the lower level. And it's just a different way to put in a barrel if you were interested. Uh, but you see the back end is hiked up a little bit higher than the front end. Then you can have them connected to be more than one. And then these, this is just decoration, half size and fancy. And then this one looks like a trash can to me, but it's it's actually a rain barrel. You see, it's, there's no perfect look to it. And now these are the inflatables and they will collapse if there's no water in them. So it's entirely up to what you like to use and have in your garage, I guess. And this one looks like an umbrella and I don't see anything wrong with that. You could party on top of that in the afternoons because you've got your umbrella and you've got your table kind of just need some chairs that'll scoot up to it and your coffee. <laughs> now these were these uh, are HOA disguises. These were Master Gardener rain barrels that they made and put in, in like the ladybug and the bricks that matches their house. You can see what I'm saying up here. And then this one is actually behind the hedges. This one is turned in the corner. So there are ways to disguise. If you have a problem with an HOA in particular, and some do, some do, then don't fight it. Just figure out a way that you can put it in there without them finding you, I guess. And then here's an upsize. And I just call this a grown-up rain barrel. I don't know what else to call it. But it's, the, it's another one that's fully enclosed so you don't have the problem. So what's the math on rain barrels? Well, one inch of rain and a thousand foot square root would be 623 gallons. Is that worth keeping? Sure it is, sure it is. This one, is what kind of barrel do we use now? I guess any barrel that you find rolling down the street would work. No. No. Why not? Depends on what was in it, doesn't it? Okay. We use only food grade barrels, only. And it's been like pickle juice in them. And we get them at, and we get ours at Duval Container on Myrtle Avenue. <clears throat> okay. These are 55 gallon barrels. Now, we, as you see in our rain barrel family, we had different sizes. But for a class, we, we've been doing 55 gallon like, like this. So we use the recycled, food grade only. The paint doesn't matter. The, the rain doesn't care whether it is painted or not. But of course, it makes it much more attractive, doesn't it? Okay. And equipment needed? Well, I don't know. What kind of equipment could we need, use? What kind of equipment could, do we need? How about a saw? Ladies, are you familiar with some of these electrical tools? These are just really small hand tools and easy enough to use. All right, what are we using the saw for? In the top, see there's a hole in the top for, for this. So you have to have a saw for hole. Now, and when we get to another slide, I'll show you another one where we use the drill to drill their holes, which is different, okay? So you have a drill. And you have your saw. Those are that's equipment that's needed. So let's go a little farther. Uh, the screen and the cover. If you have a hole in the top, it, this is a what we call a closed top, totally closed top. You make sense to you? 
we can turn this over if we have to for you to see. But if it's a closed top, then there's room enough to make a hole and use a colander for the rain to go through. Okay, then you can take it out for spaghetti at supper time. Right. If we have an open top, which is the black barrel, and you see this red one here with the screw lid, that is open top. So with an open top, you're going to unscrew the lid and the ring, and you're going to put something like this on it. Now, there's a little bit more to this if you just hang on. Okay, this is where I was going to mention that at least a 10% slope from the house. That's to keep the foundation water from the foundation of your house that you do not need or want. Okay, you want to always put your rain barrel somewhere near where you're going to use it. I mean, doesn't that make sense? It does to me because otherwise I wouldn't be using some of the things I do if they weren't convenient. Okay. Now, they can be attached to gutters or not attached to gutters because with something like this, you can do one of these. I mean, you, these are things that you can attach to your gutter. This would be your gutter. And you can attach one of these to it. One of these will, will fit and bend it to suit where it will go in here or it will go in here. Am I making sense? Okay. All right, this one is for the down, for the side. Now, here's another thing safety wise. When it comes to the rain barrel, gravity feed two blocks high will give you two gallon per minute but you want to tie it down. Can you see the one with the house? You see how he's, what's that um, plumber's tape where it's attached to the house? Why in the heck, who cares? It's a rain barrel. Why does somebody care? Exactly, exactly. It could get turned over and could be very dangerous. So it needs to be tied down and it, it depends on the placement. Now, here are some of the bases, and the bases that you make need to be very sturdy. They don't have to be that high. They just, however high you have them, they need to be sturdy. Now, you see that one the, on the left has the four little knobs for it to sit on. The, the one on the right is your bricks, your cinder block. But that cinder block is big enough that it covers the whole base so that there's not a chance of it to wobble or to go over. Is everybody still awake? Okay. Now look here. This black one, you see how he's fit with the yellow part? Now the, uh, the other one, the one with the, the flowers, He's got a pretty good solid base here with all the rocks as well. And so does the black one. But I wanted to show you this. The one on the left, I see plenty of danger in that. Do you not? Because the cinder block is only one cinder block or two cinder blocks most under that rain barrel that is, it looks like five high. Is there danger there? My goodness, yes. It, on either one, it looks like danger to me. And this, I want to hear this. No. No. Okay, what am I talking about? No. That means you cut the whole top off and you put this on. That's no. Why? Why? Things, 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 things like two-legged kids and four-legged pets. Virginia, um, Victoria, had the 
uh, Victoria Freeman. She she had the what is it? She had over here the house, the rental. Gosh, I can't think of it. Anyway, she had one of these on the side of this house where you go to stay for the night. B and B, yes, that's it. And she she heard screaming and crying one night in the rain barrel. It was a raccoon. It was that could have been a child very easily because you see the weight of that child or that animal on this is not strong enough. So therefore, when we do the, the black ones or we do the ones with the ring off the top, that didn't have that was a solid like this. And so this was been better. But we found that it's safer. We want to be safe at the same time. Okay. Questions there at all? Now, this is what the top of your open one looks like. You see, you have the flat cover and then you have the ring. Well, what we do with the flat cover is that we put holes in that cover so we make our own area for the rain to go down in. We do not cut that out like this is. Am I making that clear? Because that's that's really serious with us. Okay, as long as you got that down. You can use the screen there as long as you've got the little holes. The, the holes are about this big, and you can put six or eit or 10, whatever suits suit you, so that the rain goes into it. Now, here's another one. This is, think about where you're going to place that rain barrel. Hmm, what's the difference? Maxine was working in our office. She was one of the agents. And she didn't live in Jacksonville. She was one of the other towns. These are the police photos of somebody on her rain barrel trying to get in her house. That's exactly what they are. So you want to think about security as well. So the connection, how do we connect them? Well, if you hook them to a downspout, you see, here you go, very simple. You can hook them to a downspout with these items. You put in the screen, the hose attachment. This is, we use the brass. We don't use the plastic, we use the brass because the plastic can rot away on you eventually. And we also use the overflow for at the top. And so therefore, that takes care of what we have to put in. And we have the, the, the uh, sizes with this to, to make those holes, okay? And we also have the directions. And if you're good, I might give you a copy. All right, Denise said I could. I asked her ahead of time. Yeah, and so getting the water out, that was a question somebody asked me one time. See, we've done at least 100 barrels a year, maybe three times a year we'd do a program, and a workshop. And so you get some crazy questions. And if there's a chance, and Denise was, will let you know, if you want a, a workshop or something, we can work it out. But elevation, how do we get the water out? I don't know how you would get the water out. You turn the spigot on. But that's what somebody said to me. How do I get the water out? Anyway, turn the spigot on and, and make your back hurt, I guess. <laughs> but remember, it's gravity feeds. So the higher up it is, the faster it's going to come out. Here is a pay attention. It's they're saying that there are risks to using water from the rain barrels to irrigate edibles. So that's your vegetable garden, right? <clears throat> and Rutgers study testing water from 12 rain barrels showed that all exceeded total chloroform drinking water quality standards. That meant there was three, 
there was E. coli in 9% of the barrels. So you want to be very careful with your edibles and that. And then if you want, if you're not patient to let the water out, here you can get a solar pump uh, for $150 and it pumps up to 100 gallons of water on a fully charged battery. So there, that's up to you. And then the neighbors can borrow. If, if Denise, if somebody gets one, maybe you can borrow it. How's that sound? So the other is <laughs> linking the kits. Uh, look at that little blue one at the top. You see where that cord is going in the back? That's the same idea as, as the other picture that I was talking about. You can see it a little bit better here. But the linking kits so that you can have more than one, you can buy them separately if you choose. Uh, what's the biggest concern? I didn't hear you. You're, oh, that's the biggest problem is overflow. The biggest problem is, is Marvin. Marvin the mosquito. So what do we do with him? Well, this is where the bits come in and the dunks come in. And we've had people use salad oil with the water. It's just got to think about the birds because if they get the oil on their wings, then that's going to not make them happy or for them to fly. This is not poisonous for the birds. It's not poisonous for your plants or your animals. Okay? And it'll tell you all that on the back here. <clears throat> so if we're going to have clean out time where you want to put it away for a season, then he, this gives you an idea. You can use soap, vinegar, and water, or you can use lemon juice and water. The other thing I wanted to tell you is if you want a copy of this presentation, then you need to let me know and I can zip it to you. Um, Storm warnings, that would be our hurricane. Fully open the spigots, drain it, store it if possible. You know, when they tell you everything's going to fly around in the yard, that, that kind of thing. So there's also a YouTube that you can go to and see how they're made. And this shows you my home email address. And then Gene Bryant is one of our guys that helps with the workshops and he said that he would answer questions if need be if somebody had trouble so uh, anything that uh, we can do we certainly will be happy to to make it pleasant for you especially with the you know everybody should have rain barrel because somewhere in your yard you should have it whether it's attached to your downspout or in the in the middle of the garden okay do we have questions to? So uh, let me end the slide so we can go to you full screen and we'll take some questions from the audience. So let me just escape here, stop share. All right. So if you have questions for Evie, please raise your hand. I've got one over here from Susan. And then uh, Corinne, if you see any, please uh, gather those on Zoom. Here you go, Susan. Heavy, I'm concerned about the overflow as well and, and how you secured. I, I see where you would drill in to put the overflow valve. And this the is the overflow, and you're, you're concerned about it for what reason? Well, does, does the water, once it gets to that point. Um, you, you want to attach a hose to it. Okay. You can attach a hose because that's threaded for that. Okay. And then it can go into one of your garden beds. Okay. And the, the spigot, is it, how is it secured? Is it? Um, oh, it's very tight. Now, this, on the instructions, it'll tell you about using some of this tape, but okay. we have never used any of our tape uh, for hours because we thought if we wanted to take it out for some reason, mm -hmm. that's the only reason, but it could be secured. Better. Maybe let me help a little bit with that. The spigots that we use are threaded. Our super duper master driller, Gene, drills them so that they fit this perfectly and he actually screws right. the spigot in. Yeah. 
So they don't they don't come out unless you kick it or knock it or have it on those towers of bricks and it falls over. Oh yeah. But they're in there very, very secure. And, and they're they're down here, just like like this one shows. And, and a lot of them too, they take these and run them in series. Most of our guys who are more ambitious than we ladies are have several rain barrels and they have them in a row. And with a longer PVC pipe between them. So it, it's going to flow to one, and when it's full, it's going to flow to the next. And when it's full, it's going to go, and so on and so forth. I think Paul has mm -hmm. eight or ten yes. rain barrels. Yes, they, I only have two, <laughs> two together, because that's as big of a stand as I wanted to build. Yeah, right. And Did that you, answer for you, Susan? Uh, it does. The uh, the only other thing is, where would you actually come up with a barrel? Where can you buy those barrels? Oh, a Duval container on Myrtle Avenue. Okay. Or they can attend a class at the extension office, well, right? And or they'll get a barrel as part of their class. Or a, we a could threaded, do, um, a threaded drill. Or we could do we'll a give class you the, here. that kind of secure screw to screw. A threaded drill will give you that kind of secure, you know, from the screw. Oh of yes, the yeah. It's it's a it's a right size drill for it. I just want. I just wanted to clarify for the spigot and the overflow valve, you're, you're not attaching them from the inside. It's just coming from the outside. And for the spigot, how it has the threads, you're just attaching it and that's it. And that ha that's how it stays. You're attaching them from the outside yeah, and they just... are very strong. Okay. But, yeah. This Abby, one, I'm going to take this, a walk down with them in my hand. This one has been in here from the very day one that this was made. And it's been a while. Who was asking about the spigots? have a barrel at home and we we're trying to figure out how to attach it and we didn't realize that you just attach it from the outside okay well and and see yeah. the instructions will tell you the okay. size you need um, a three-quarter inch spigot with male threads and you're using a 15 16 inch drill bit so i mean that's the instructions will have those things that fit because that's we buy only what it says on here okay all right we have another question over here how are you able to get the water if you don't have a gutter how do we get the water from oh it can be from the roof or it can be from the the yard if from the roof it's going to come fast it's going to fill faster but now from the roof you're going to have Maybe some debris if it's attached to one of your downspouts. Yeah, I don't have a gutter. So if you don't have the, gutters the, and you have a place where the roof comes together, yeah. everybody has at least one waterfall. I do. Oh, I do. Where but, the roof comes together and there's no gutter, yeah. there's your spot. Here we go. Another question. So if we're not using the roof runoff and we just like stick one in the middle of the garden, would that be okay for edibles or no? That would be okay. That would be fine because as long as it's not you're not right. It's not as bad. Let's put it. It's just not as bad because you're getting the real rainwater. Okay. It's just if the rainwater has a problem, I don't think it'll have as much problem in the open air as it does coming off that roof. Okay. Because you got a lot of things coming off that roof. That's a very good question. Anybody else? All right. Do we have anything from Zoom? Okay. Well, now we come to the part of the program where we give these lovely women a big round of applause and thank them so much. And then um, before we leave you, I just wanted to ask you, um, so we have two surveys today, and I think um, you got one maybe when you came in. Um, that's from the Duval County Extension Office that we really want you to take part in. But we also have the survey that the Garden Club does because we want your feedback as well. So we're gonna feedback you like crazy today. Um, so uh, you can use your phone to scan this um, code. You could also do it if you're at home on Zoom. We're also giving you a link that you can do. And then we'll also send you um, that link in an email tomorrow when we uh, post this on our blog. So um, please use one of those options. We really want to hear from you. <laughs> um, 
And uh, once again, I want to thank our lovely speakers today. Thank you so much for being here. I and do. I want to thank all of you for being here because it's no fun doing these programs if you're not here because otherwise we're just talking to ourselves. There you go. <laughs> so thank you and have a lovely evening and stay dry. <laughs> and Penny, did you get everybody collected? Yeah, okay. we're all good. All right. Have Very a great good. evening. Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you.